Sisters can use these chairs if they want. You are happy? Recording is on. Shall I put the recording? Yeah. Send request. I, I have to send request. Okay. Yes, it's recording. Can we start? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين جل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفه وأترمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان عونك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله بيعب توفيق تو continue our study of history of Shia Islam and this is the last part of the life of Imam Reza alayhi salam Alhamdulillah, it just <laughs> happened like this. Uh, so, as you remember, uh, we said that in the year 200 after Hijra, Ma'mun sent someone to Medina to talk to Imam Raza alayhi salam and ask him to move to Marv in Khorasan, this region, and become Waliyul Ah like prince become the second person in the order. And of course, Imam Reza was not happy with that. Uh, and inshallah, I will say, you know, what happened. So we said this much towards the end of last session. So why Ma'moon wanted to offered this position to Imam Raza alayhi salam. It was not because he had love for Imam or, you know, he was believing in Imam, you know, rights, etc. He had lots of problems because Ma'amun and his brother Amin, they were fighting after Harun al-Rashid. Two sons of Harun al-Rashid were fighting. So Ma'amun went to Khorasan or came to Khorasan because now we are in Khorasan. So he, he wanted to establish himself, get rid of his brother, and then have control over Iraq and, you know, Hejaz and all over. And he knew that many people loved Imam Raza alayhi salam. Alavids loved him. But I give a shukur. Alavis loved Imam Raza, of course, but even non Alavis had respect for Imam Raza because of his knowledge, piety, being progeny of the Prophet. So Ma'amun had a kind of you know clever idea that if I make him my you know like successor uh, in this way. I can attract people toward myself. And I can say that according to him, Ali ibn Musa Rada, I am a legitimate Khalifa. This was, if otherwise, Imam Raza would not have accepted. Plus, he thought in this way he can also damage image of Imam Raza by saying that, look, he is also interested in power. He is accepted to work with me. So those who were against him, then they could not, you know, uh, attack Imam. And those who were, uh, you know, in favor of Imam also could not keep their respect for Imam. So he forced Imam alayhi salam to accept this position. Uh, his representative uh, or any boy forced Imam and said, you know, there's no way you don't accept this. And you have to move to Farasa. Before we go to what Imam said there is a beautiful quotation here i mean in the sense that it's very helpful 
this is a kind of internal discussion that Ma'amun had with some Abbasids. Because Abbasids were somehow together, but some of them were critical of Ma'amun because they didn't understand his plan. So they were saying, why you are you not know, giving this position to Ali ibn Musa Rada? So he was explaining one incident in this one. He says, this man, referring to Imam Raza Ali Salam, he says, this man has hidden his, has hidden his work from us and is calling people towards Imam. This is when Imam was already in Khurasan. He says, we made him our Wali al ad so that he calls people towards us and admits our Khilafah. And also we made this so that his followers know that it's not that he is against us. He doesn't believe in our legitimacy. And he says, we wanted you know, to control him, basically, and legitimize ourselves. And he says, we also were, were worried that if we leave him to himself and don't engage him, then he may create problem for us and cause division. But now we realize that we made mistake by making him our prince. And he says we have put ourselves on the edge of the cliff by doing this big mistake. And he said we should not be careless. We have to make sure that gradually we lower his position in the eyes of people. We need to make plan for bringing him down. So he understood that he made mistake. So what happened was that Imam Raza salam, of course, didn't want to accept. And for Ma'amun, just to offer this was a success because he could say, I have offered, he didn't accept. And if he accepted again was a success. So whether Imam accepted or not, was success. But he forced that Imam must accept. And some people were not very clear, so they started objecting to Imam. And they say, you know, why you accepted? Imam Raza salam says that I accepted for the same reason that my grandfather, Imam Ali, accepted to be part of that council of six people, you know. The second Khalifa, when he was dying, he appointed six people to form a council and decide about success. So he said, for the same reason that Amir al accepted, I accepted. Or for example, some people said, you know, you were showing that you have no interest in dunya. Why you accepted this? And Imam said, Allah knows how much I dislike this. So you see, even some of his followers started doubting. But Imam, when he saw that there is no you know, kind of way to refuse, of course, he didn't decide to fight or be killed for that. Because some people say, oh, in such cases, you know, we have to be killed, for example, and not accept. But no, what Imam did, he accepted, but he put condition that I don't get involved in any administration. I don't appoint anyone. I don't dismiss anyone so that he is not responsible for what they do. So it becomes like most an honorary position. He was not involved. He didn't work with them. He didn't you know, support them or anything. And also what he did, he showed that he's not happy. So when he was leaving Medina, Imam Raza himself says, when they wanted to take me away from Medina, I called my family and you know extended family and ask them to cry for me so that I hear their cry. So everyone heard that family of Imam are crying. And uh, Imam gave some money to the extended family 
and said, I'm not going to come back. So they knew that the Imam is forced to this. Also, what the Imam did was that he was uh, mentioning problems and he was criticizing when there was something wrong. I think if Imam was not in that position, maybe he was more uh, careful not to criticize, for example, to appear as an opponent. But now he has to do something extra to show that he's not with them. So he was criticizing and also he was trying to use this opportunity to tell people about the merits of Ahlul Bayt For example, in one sermon, Imam Raza salam says, uh, thanks to Allah, that no matter how much they try to bring us down, Allah raised us. For 80 years, on member and pulpit of Kufa, they cursed us. They tried to hide our merits. They tried uh, to do lots of things against us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only wanted to raise our position. So he was mentioning merit of Amir al Mumin and Ahlul Bayt. And also, another thing which happened was that this position gave Imam chance to meet many religious leaders, whether they are from Islamic schools or from other religions. Ma'mun was a person who was very interested in knowledge. There is a quotation here from Ayatollah Mutahari that Ayatollah Mutahari says, among the rulers, Ma'mun was one of the most knowledgeable rulers of the world. And he said maybe he was the most knowledgeable one. So he was not a person who was very ignorant. He used to buy lots of books. He, he opened Darul Hikmah or Beit al Hikmah to uh, translate books from Greek to Arabic. So he, he was very much interested in knowledge, science, books. Uh, so he had interest in these kinds of discussions. But maybe also it's very natural to think that. He wanted to tell people that Ali ibn Musa is not the most knowledgeable person who has, you know, El Mulghaib. So he was bringing knowledgeable people from other traditions and organizing discussion and debate and ihtijaj, hoping that maybe in one of these things Imam Raza you know, can be defeated, for example, or, you know, uh, can be uh, underscattered. But Against his desire and plan, all these proved Imam's knowledge. And he was very bad, you know, unhappy with this, that Imam Raza is able to discuss everything with every group and still show that his superiority. Also, Abdul Salam Harabi told Mahmoud that Ali ibn Musa has started uh, session in which he teaches Aqa'at. And he is convincing people about you know, their ideas. And Mahmoud was very upset and he sent Muhammad ibn Amr at Tusi, from Tus, Tus is this area which is Mashad, and said to Imam that, sorry, said to people that they should not attend Imam Raza's lectures on Aqa'at. Another thing which was very uh, difficult made him very upset is the famous story of Salat al Eid. So he asked Imam Raza to lead the Salat al Eid, and Imam Raza apologized. He said, You know, I said I don't want to eat because Salat al Eid is somehow kind of official Salat because normally Khalifa or someone appointed by Khalifa. So Imam Raza apologized, but Mahmoud said, you must do it. So Imam said, I will do it in the way that Rasulullah used to say Salatul Eid. Not in the way which has become customary. 
My mom said, okay, because he didn't know <laughs> what was the side of Rasulullah. So they saw that Imam came out of house with naked feet. Not like a king, you know. With, with absolute humbleness and simplicity, he came out and started saying Allahu Akbar. And this was so moving that even commanders and generals of Ma'mun who were on their horses, they rushed to come down, even some of them, because to take up, you know, their boots was taking time. They just tore their boots and joined. So the news reached Ma'mun that if you wait, these people, you know, can defeat you and you know, finish your governance. So he asked Imam Rizal, I sent someone to ask Imam Rizal to go back. Imam Rizal went back. So, what Ma'mun did when he managed to get rid of Amin, he decided to go back. He killed his wazir who helped him a lot, Fazl ibn Sa'ad. He killed Fazl ibn Sa'ad. He also poisoned Imam Raza salam. But for three days, he stayed where Imam Raza was buried. Mourning for Imam Raza. On the one hand, he killed him. On the other, for three days, he didn't leave it. And said, I am in Azar for him. At the end of the Now, some of the spiritual uh, aspects of Imam's life and some of his teachings. Uh, Ibrahim ibn Abbas says, Imam Raza alayhi salam used to complete recitation of Quran every three days. He was doing Khatm al-Qur'an every three days. He said, I can do it faster, but I don't pass any verse unless I reflect. What was this verse about? When was it revealed? So, therefore, it takes me more time. Otherwise, I would have finished faster. So, every three days he was reciting Qur'an. And also, it is narrated that in his bed every night also, he was reciting Quran. Ibrahim ibn Abbas says, I never saw Imam Raza saying bad, saying you know, rude words to his servants. And uh, also, uh, for example, you know, he was normally eating with his servants. And even it is said that even, for example, if someone was looking after the horses or you know camels or whatever in the stable, the man was inviting him also to have meal. So he was not having like a royal kind of you know setting for himself. And also any servant who was eating, a man was not asking them you know to do anything. He was waiting for them. To finish their food. There is a famous hadith from Imam Raza salam that mu'min would not be complete in Iman unless has one characteristic from God, one characteristic from Rasulullah, one from Imam, like Amir al -Mumin. The characteristic that mu'min should have, which is from Allah, is Ketmanu Sir. To provide people with cover. Don't disclose secrets of people. Allah is satar for you. Yeah, he covers our problems. You should learn from Allah to cover the problems of people. The second thing, a quality that Rasulullah had and we should have is mudara. Mudara to nas. To be considerate with people. Rasulullah was very soft and gentle and kind with people. We should acquire this quality. And the quality that we should you know, learn from Imam, like Amirul Mu'mineen, is patience. When there are difficulties and calamities. Okay? 
So one quality from Allah, one quality from Rasulullah, one quality from Imam, from Allah, Ketman or Sir, from Rasulullah, Mudarat or Nas, from Imam, Sah. Uh, when Imam wanted to write for himself a list of things that he has to do, it is said that Imam used to write on the top of the paper, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Inshallah I will remember these. And then he was listing the task. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Inshallah I will remember to do this. Imam Raza was asked, who are the best people? He said, those that when they do something good, they are happy. When they do something bad, they ask for forgiveness. When some blessings are given to them, they are grateful. And when calamities come, they are patient. And when they are upset, they forgive. Okay? He also said, helping weak people is one of the best types of sadaqah. He said, worst people are those who don't help others financially, even if they can, and eat their food alone. Although they can share their meal with others, they eat their food alone and don't share with those who need. And those who beat their servants, they are worst people. And you know, in that time it was even you know up to recent, you know, time, you know, what they did with the slaves, you know, uh, in some countries, you know. But Imam was saying these are the worst people. Okay, so alhamdulillah, we 